is the swim team in the building? I said, is the swim team in the building? Let's drown these and get these gold medals. Squad, I right, swim team. Today's story, I'm going to tell y'all how I accidentally became the plug in college. Immediately when I came out here, it amazed me how much people like to smoke. They like to smoke weed, they like to smoke cigarettes. Like, even now, you can't go to the club without without coming back home smelling like just purity smoke. I actually hate that. I'm not gonna lie. But at the time, I wasn't really, I wasn't into smoking like that, you feel me? I thought I was gonna be the next Roy Jones Jr. I figured if college didn't work, I was either gonna be a professional boxer or I was gonna join the Marines. What amazed me even more, right, was that you can just go someplace and, like, dudes was literally just advertising that they had that gas. Like, dudes was literally advertising, like, I got that gas, shawty. I got that gas, shawty. I remember um, I had went to Five Points. I forgot what that store was in Five Points where you could, like, buy Jordans and buy all types of sneakers and stuff like that. But I went to, to cop some J's and dudes was literally out there like, yo, shawty, shawty. Shot. I got that gas shot, bruh, 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 bruh. That's how they speak out here, bruh. I don't know who decided to start adding two bros, bruh, 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 bruh. Yo, I got that gas, and they had all types of names for it. And me personally, I wasn't, I wasn't smoking back then, so I'm like, nah, I'm good. And even if I was, I'm not buying no, I'm not buying from no random person on the street. Like, look dirty. You look like you you bag up other stuff besides weed. You probably bagging up crack next to the weed. Like I'm not finna buy no nothing from you. I might be smoking crack rocks by accident. So you know it, it was a it was a no bueno period. So when my roommates used to spark up, I used to be upset. You feel me? Like I used to be upset. Like I used to really wanna I used to wanna fight these people. It didn't help. I had short man syndrome, but I used to wanna fight these people because I used to clean the room up. You know what I'm saying? And then I'll come outside and they'll be in the living room cutting the, the blunts and, and leaving the guts all over the table. Now that I really think about it, it's kind of two-faced because the people that I used to hang out with the most, that wasn't my roommates, they used to be the ones supplying the whole dorms with the weed. You feel me? I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with the group, The Alliance. I don't know how old a lot of y'all are, but it was a song that came out. Tat, 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 tat. Tat, tat, tat it up. Right? So one of the group members actually lived in our dorms. He didn't go to the school. He didn't go to Clark. He didn't go to Spellman. He didn't go to Morehouse. He definitely didn't go to the Art Institute. But I think he was messing with some chicken there. And, you know, he was just, that's where he was at. So him and his peoples, they used to supply the whole campus with the Mary Jane. Right? And I used to be down there with them and I used to conversate with them and you know they'd be smoking and of course I didn't really have a problem with it but <clears throat> I think it was because it wasn't my room so anyway fast forward stuff started getting hot you know um, people started telling and eventually their room got raided and they had to stop selling so that created an opportunity for more people to start selling. whole bunch of different plugs started popping up everywhere so one of the people that started selling was my boy Dene, right? Now Dene was a, he had a good situation. You feel what I'm saying? And the thing I can say is he was selling the wrong way. The way he was selling, he would have all his, his work on the table. He would have all his bread right there. He'd be playing his PlayStation. And the people used to come in to buy and they used to see everything. They used to just see his work on the table. They used to see the bread. And I feel as though that made him a target because eventually, some dudes ran up in his room and pretty much tried to rob him and the gun ended up going off and Danae won and uh, this white boy that we used to hang out with named Sinatra had to jump out the window. Danae broke his spleen, Sinatra had a hole through his mouth and I think Juan, Juan fractured something, he, I think he, he fractured his pelvis or something like that. So, you know. That, that was that. That was a very sad situation. So let's fast forward to me now. That was the breakdown of everything. Let's fast forward to how I became the plug. So when after that incident happened, Juan and Danae, Sinatra, everybody pretty much left, right? I moved from the third floor to the seventh floor. My room, it was only me in my room. I had like the best situation. It was only me in my room. I think it was only me in that hall. Everybody had already started moving out and stuff like that. One day, me and my boy Eric, 
we was coming from the pool and we got on the orange elevator and I promise you when the door opened on the orange elevator, it was a big ass Ziploc bag. The bag was this big. You see my hand can't even fit on the camera, but the bag was literally this big and it had a whole bunch of little dime bags in it. I don't know if you're familiar with how, you know, back in the day, dimes was $10. So it was a big ass Ziploc bag with a whole bunch of little $10 bags in there. My boy E thinking quick, he picked it up. He put it under his 3X uh, white tee, you feel me? And we went to his room. Went to his room, he counted it up or whatever. And it was like, it was anywhere from 160 to 170 um, bags in there. So let's break that down. That's about $1,700, right? That's about $1,700. So we split it in half. I went back to my room or whatever, and he kept the rest in his room. And I started making phone calls to all the people I know that be smoking. I'm like, yo, you feel me? Like, I got that work. I got that gas. What's up? So eventually, people started catching on or whatever. And, you know, I was <laughs> I was hustling for that week, bro. I think, like, that first that first um day, I made like, made, like, $200, bro, that first day. I was just selling them joints. Then eventually, like, I started throwing deals. Since it wasn't mine, you feel me? It wasn't my work. I started throwing deals. So I'm like, yo, I'm going to sell you. I'll give you this dime bag for seven. I'll give you a dime for eight. Like, you feel me? Whatever number came to my mind that wasn't ten, if you came up there in the right the right way, I'll, I'll give it to you or whatever, right? So eventually, though, I started getting uncomfortable because more people started finding out. Like it took it took literally like three days before people just new people just started popping up at my room and I'm like, all right, you know what? It's getting kinda hot. I need to get rid of this joint. It's it's getting way too hot. So I started selling the downs for five. You feel me? Then I'll go back to it just it just depend. It depend. But I was getting them off. Then eventually he was like, yo, I'm about to move. I'm, it was his time to move out of um his room. So he he bought the rest that he had. Son, I was the plug, bro. I was the only one selling weed during that time. The only one, son. Accident by accident, too. So I started getting them off, getting them off, getting them off, getting them off. I don't know how long some of y'all been on the channel, but I have a story that I'm gonna put up right here about this kid named Theo. So Theo found out that I was selling weed, right? And Theo came to my room, bought the first time, came back the next day, bought again, and he was like my main customer, which was crazy. You feel me? Like, we was cool, but we wasn't that cool because of the stuff he used to do. And I'm going to tell y'all now. It got to the point where, like, he would come by and then he just started walking around my room like, yo, bro, you the only one up here? I'm like, yeah. He like, don't you got another room? I'm like, yeah. He's like, man, I want to move up here with you, dog. I want to move up here with you. So... I'm not going to lie. I went downstairs and I told them folks, I'm like, yo, listen, um, somebody want to move into my room. Don't move him into my room. Now, the reason why I didn't want him to move in my room is because he's, he's schizophrenic, bro. He's like, he's crazy. Like this man would literally smoke and would be like, yo, bro, I heard y'all was talking about me, bro. Be like, what are you talking about? Like, did you, did we tell you that? Like, you feel me? So they didn't listen and they ended up moving him to my room. So he was still copping from me. But now he lived in my room. The thing about this man living in my room, bro, is that he used to cook bacon and every day. He cooked bacon every single day. And and the house smelled like straight pig ass. And he used to, he didn't used to wash the dishes. Then like I'll have company. My son would like, nah, yo, I got class in the morning. You know how many times I went to beat this man ass? I'm like, yo, bro, like nah, bro, it's not going down. I don't care if you got class in the morning. What you mean? Didn't nobody tell you to move in here. Then one day, mind you, like, the, the weed done now. The weed done. Like, I, I got it off. You feel me? But now I have to deal with a freaking customer. A custy that was so in love with, 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 <laughs> with what I was selling. Decided to bunk with me. I have to deal with his crazy ass now. You feel me? One day, I don't know what he was smoking on. It wasn't mine. It wasn't the stuff I was selling. This man, uh text me like yo bro i heard y'all was plotting on me i heard you was plotting on me bro so i'm like yo son like what are you talking about son like you're not a female i'm not talking about you i'm not plotting on you like what are you what are you really talking about no response 
went to sleep, wake up the next morning, I wake up to like this man just slamming doors and and dropping shit on the floor or whatever. Then right before he left, he's like, yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. You gonna get poked up. You gonna get poked the F up. You gonna get poked the F up. Once I heard that, I went downstairs. I was like, yo, I told y'all not to move this this man in my room. Y'all moved him in my room. And and like, you feel me? So when stuff happened to him, it's gonna be on y'all hands. When stuff happened to him, it's gonna be on y'all hands. The dude was like, is that a threat? I'm like, nah, it's a promise. It's not a threat. And then I ended up like bumping into Theo up the hall, I'm like, yo, son, so what you talking about, son? Like, you talking about poking me up? What, what, what's up? You feel me? Like, you've been doing this for a minute. What's good? The thing about this man is he never wanted to fight. He used to, we used to have them, we used to have them exacto knives in school, so he used to want to pull the exacto knife out. Now, if you know what an exacto knife is, bro, think about it this way, right? I don't know if y'all ever seen um what, like, cuts look like when dudes in jail get cut and, and it just, poof, it just open up. If you get cut with an exacto knife, it's just going to open up. It's that sharp. So, he didn't want to fight. You feel me? Like, he definitely didn't want to fight. And eventually, I just moved out the room. But the crazy thing is, during all this time, the, the, the weed had ran out. And people still used to come knocking at the door. Like, yo, you know, I'm trying to cop. I'm, trying. I'm like, nah, I don't have any. I don't have any. And I feel as though, like, even though I made, I made some bread. <laughs> I made some bread selling somebody else stuff. You feel what I'm saying? But... The ramifications from that was I ended up gaining the roommate from hell. I ended up gaining the roommate from hell, bro. That was the ramifications off, off of that. I was in such a perfect situation, bro. The room by myself, in a hall by myself. I'm talking about my shorty could come over and we could be doing the nasty. She could be loud as hell. Ain't nobody could hear her, bro. Unless you walking past my door, but nobody could hear her because there was nobody else on that hall except for me. Bro. But yeah, that's how I became the plug and pretty much gained the roommate from hell.